This is Twit. I said there was news. We got to do it. I guess the first story. I thought we might be like doing wall to wall coverage of the Ethereum merge. Like, oh my God, Ethereum has crashed. It went so smoothly Thursday. Ethereum, which is the, I think now it's safe to say, while Bitcoin gets a lot of the attention, Ethereum is probably the biggest, uh, I don't know what its market cap it is, but the, but the most popular of the Bitcoins is what most NFTs use, ETH, ETH, ETH. It moved from the very energy costly proof of work system on Thursday to the proof of stake system, saving, they say, 99% of the energy used and and i'm sure there's a big sigh from the from the world at this putting a lot of bitcoin miners <laughs> out of business uh i i alex is this part of your portfolio to cover crypto yeah yeah in fact i have um a dedicated crypto reporter on my team and so i've been tracking this pretty carefully and, and what kind of shocked me the most was the smoothness of it the Ethereum merge, the move from proof of work to proof of stake, which is a different way of kind of figuring out what transactions are legit and handing out newly issued tokens, um, it was pushed back and pushed back and delayed and delayed. It became almost a joke, like, when will this ever happen? And then it finally mm -hmm. did, and seemingly, you know, fingers crossed for everyone else out there, without a hiccup. I was very impressed, actually. Uh, the bad news is all those guys who spent a lot of money on custom rigs with giant GPUs and ASICs, to do mining are now yes. finding it unprofitable. <laughs> so here's well, the I thing. I think that's... Uh, not a bad yeah. thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad thing. Anybody who was doing that was simply ignoring the environmental costs, which was well documented. They knew what they were doing. They were basically just... Uh, I've heard statistics like the mining of Bitcoin generally was vastly more energy consuming than all the savings from solar energy combined in the world. So, so I, I'm not I'm not too torn up about the the fact that they that they sort of uh, lost it. Plus, as you pointed out, they had plenty of warning that this was coming. You want to hear a crazy stat? This is from Statista. The average energy consumption for for trans a single Bitcoin transaction was two thousand one hundred eighty eight kilowatt hours. 2,188 kilowatt hours for one transaction, which me, which is this the, the little bar to the right, 148 kilowatt hours, that's 100,000 Visa transactions. So Bitcoin was basically unsustainable. Now, Bitcoin right. is still on proof of work. It's still using all that energy. But right. according to PC Magazine, uh, it's so expensive now to mine Bitcoin, nobody's doing it. It's just hard to find a place where energy is so cheap that you can do it profitably. Right. The Ethereum move is is really uh, a point of leadership by Ethereum uh, where, you know, it's getting a ton of press. And now that they, they're doing this, uh, the rest of the Bitcoin and, and cryptocurrency communities will have to they'll have to respond to this because it's it, the, the, a world in which you can burn that kind of energy uh, for, for, for Bitcoin mining transactions, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I, I just think it's, it's untenable. It's, it's unacceptable. It's socially unacceptable. And, and they're going to have to do uh, something about the, about the massive energy consumption. And again, Ethereum here is pointing the way. So it's, it's really a positive thing that they did that. It and was that it a very succeeded. risky thing. Of course, there's Ethereum miners who were making money uh, with proof of work who were upset. Uh, there was talk of a fork. Did the, did, did the fork happen, Alex? So I, there have been forks of Ethereum before, um, but what's really interesting about the situation and what Mike's talking about, the pressure essentially from this successful merge to take the remaining chains that are on proof of work and move them over to proof of stake is that it's not just a technology conversation. It's also almost a religious conflict because if you talk to some of these Bitcoin maxis or people that really put Bitcoin above all just because of how it functions, um, proof of work is a very important component to why they think that. And so the argument, and I'm not saying that I endorse this, but the argument is that now that Ethereum has moved to proof of stake, it's effectively more centralized. And you can argue that different ways. But the, the power of Bitcoin, such as it is described by its fans, is that, yes, it is hard to mine. Yes, it is very energy intensive, but it's so spread out around the world that it's essentially bulletproof. And there's some 
reasonableness to that. But I, I, I end up much closer to where Mike is, which is saying that, guys, can, can we not, if it's a possibility, burn all this energy for effectively no reason? There are, <laughs> you could buy a Bitcoin miner rig that would uh, heat your house in uh, in uh, Scandinavia. <laughs> it was a little, literally, I mean, I'm not joking. It was a stove for your house that incidentally would also mine Bitcoin. It generates that much heat. And that's why it's not profitable. It's not economical because electricity is just, I mean, the, the people were really making money with Bitcoin mining were, you know, in China next to hydroelectric dams where the cost of energy was virtually zero. Uh, so this PC Magazine says, you know, they've talked to a lot of miners. The merge killed it all off. All my stuff is idling now, said one miner. Uh, they look at other coins, Ergo, Ravencoin, that, that still are on proof of work, but they have so little value that mining them is unprofitable. Almost all the profit, I didn't realize this, had gone to uh, Ethereum. So this was a very important thing, very risky, and... Uh, uh, and, it, and it worked so amazing yeah. well done well done there's a tie though between climate change and what you just said because if you look at chinese weather in the last couple of months there's been a historic drought in china which has led to a decrease in the flow through um damnable rivers and in essence that's led to a power crunch in parts of the country over the last couple of weeks and months so all that cheap power that used to be used for mining bitcoin before the chinese government banned that uh ended up kind of going away <laughs> and so it's it's there's there's a full circle of, uh, of of cause and effect here with humans trying to do things that I, I appreciated the irony of, even if it was quite sad to see an entire country go through such a staggering drought. Yeah. Well, we're going through it here in the West as well. Yeah. Um, so one of the side effects of this is a lot. Of, there are a lot of GPUs on eBay right now. <laughs> and and the price, the price of uh, GPUs is tumbling. Uh, it's it, it's it's the world has changed. In fact, it's cost Nvidia substantially. Uh, another story, I think, somewhat related. One of uh, Nvidia's biggest uh, OEMs, EVGA. I think more than half of the uh, Nvidia video cards were sold by EVGA. Is is ending its relationship <clears throat> with EVGA, uh, with uh, GeForce, with uh, with Nvidia. So they're going to sell them until they run out of stock, but they're not going to make any more. They make power supplies and other things. Apparently, there was a little, a little battle, <laughs> a little, a little bad blood between Nvidia and uh, and uh, EVGA. They were upset that Nvidia was undercutting their prices. Uh, they were upset that they're suddenly the the profit margin collapsed as the GPU market collapsed as Bitcoin mining uh, collapsed. And so they're just getting out of the business. Here's a, here's the gross margin. Uh, the light blue is the people who make NVIDIA cards based on the NVIDIA platform and sell them. The blue one is NVIDIA. <laughs> its margin went up while theirs went to almost nothing over the last 20 years. I'm in awe of this chart. Carolina, I, my presumption is that one doesn't have to be an analyst to be able to look at that chart and go, I'm out of this business. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty straightforward. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, NVIDIA themselves hurting. Uh, their stock prices have uh, tumbled as well. They had an excess inventory of cards. They will next week have GTC, their big conference, and they're expected to announce the uh, uh, 4,000 line of uh, video cards. They've been using the RTX 3000 for the last couple of years. So, you know, but it's it's now it's mostly just, you know, gaming. NVIDIA does have a good business in right. self-driving vehicles and AI. I'm, I'm curious about this. So I, I need to buy a new gaming PC, which I know is always dicey territory on Twix. Everyone here knows more about PCs than I do. Um, but I, I didn't for a while because, you know, all the Ethereum kiddos were buying up all the graphics cards and I didn't want to get into that fight. Uh, is now a good time to build a new PC or should I still wait? I, I'm not sure where we are on chip shortages. Well, there are a lot of GPUs out there, <laughs> but I think yes. a lot of them have seen some heavy use. They've been road hard and put away wet, as as the saying goes. So I don't wouldn't go to eBay to get one, but it has certainly, uh, I think, tanked the prices. When the four thousand is announced next week, probably won't come out for a month or two. Uh, you probably see three thousand prices go down, and a good thirty eighty is going to get you a very. It's going to be good for a gaming rig. You have. So you're in your little, see, I know more about you than I used to. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you're now in your little house out in the backyard. 
Yes. Where I used to sun in my youth. Uh, and as I remember, there are quite a few little gaming things. Do you just sit out there and play games until somebody notices and then you file copy? <laughs> oh, man. I, I, if, <laughs> that, yeah, that would be great. Um, <laughs> I, I hear about research, I hear about though. That's research. research, Alex. See, Carolina's onto something there. No, but people always talk about how people have these jobs they don't do anything. I have never managed to find one of those jobs. And so no, I the, the gaming have to rigs write. out here. You have to I, I have to I mean I'm I'm leading a team, we're doing a big conference. Oh, right. I'm in charge of uh SaaS product, like I was it's, just giving it's you a hard time. I just no, no. I'm I'm dreaming now, Leo. Like imagine waking up and like playing games and having fun and not stressing out about results and stuff. It sounds lovely. <laughs> uh, what game are you playing, or, or will we, will you be playing on this brand new gaming rig? Oh, I mean, this is a bit nerdy, but if you are if you're a gamer and you like city building simulations, there's a new game out called Farthest Frontier, Ooh. which has captured my my heart and my soul. My eyes and my hands. I'm obsessed with it. Uh, it's uh, a survival builder, so it's like <gasps> it's designed to make it hard on oh, you. Oh, I'm playing it. Yeah, see, it's, I'm it's a Valheim guy, Steam. big Valheim ah. guy, and uh, I've been playing lately. Satisfactory, which uh, is similar. It's Ooh. like it's a fun game. It's a no man's land. I just streamed a bunch on Twitch. Um, it's a no man's land kind of. You're on a planet, and you have to start mining, gathering and mining resources. This looks. This looks a little more like. Has kind of Age of Empire -y graphics. Yes, it does. And uh, there's different difficulties. Is there it's combat? Still early. There is combat. You get attacked by large raiding parties. You have to build walls and hire soldiers. And it's very complex. It's definitely still an early access, though, just as a warning point. Like the game is still being expanded, tweaked, this improved, really and so forth. Great. Yeah. Does it but actually Leo, look like this? Yes, it looks just like that. Um, satisfactory, though, that's the first person builder for yes. factories, right? Yeah. See, that threw me because I played Factorio, which is top down. This is like but, Factorio, but you, but it's first person. Yeah. That's like saying it's like dry, racing a car, but you're facing backwards. Like, how does that work? <laughs> no. All right. <laughs> I'll just show you a little uh, video from yes. last night's uh, stream. Uh, All right. Apologize for the audio. I was trying to figure out. So, yeah. see, I, I, I am wielding manufacturing things. I'm setting up power lines. Uh -huh. I've, I've got a conveyor belt, bringing in my mining, coming down from the hill there, building stuff, building more stuff. So, yeah, see, there's my, uh, that's my little, uh, uh, I don't know what that is. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a smelter, a smelter. It's taking, it's smelter. see the, the uh, copper's coming down on the conveyor belt and then the smelter, but I got to get power to the smelter. And then I have the. Okay. <laughs> it's a very fun game. Um, I didn't know Leo that we were the exact same nerd, same nerd. in two different bodies. The same if nerd. you're not, if this isn't your style of game, we're sorry, but we yeah. love it. Instead of killing people, uh, we're, we're oh, but watch out because there's this little guy's gonna get at me, and I have to. So there's a little bit of survival involved. I see, but uh, but not not a huge amount. I mean, you can handle this rodent pretty easily <laughs> it seems stuck is, 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 it, is it stuck he can't get up the wall i'm just taunting oh, okay. him i'm just taunting him right now because i died he killed me and and there's a box with all my stuff in it and i got to get around him and get the box with my yeah, stuff anyway it. you know who this is not the show for that this is not <laughs> this is <laughs> leo not alex and leo's games. <laughs> gaming show i apologize to carolina and uh, mike neither of whom have time to waste on this guy i'm gonna play for this frontier that looks that's really, really it's, looks good. Just uh, came out. I'll, I'll refund you if you don't like it personally because I'm I'm obsessed. But anyways, um, the graphics cards, computers, I think we were somewhere around there. Oh, yeah. You should be able to play that pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Get a 1080. You'll be fine. No, I play on a AMD uh, Ryzen uh, 7 with a 3080 uh, on a 55-inch LED. I don't need a real life. I've got a virtual life. I just go and I play <laughs> and I play. And that's it, you know. You know, Leo, I, I, I'm not uh, into video games at all. Uh, I've played them before, but I really don't play them these days. Don't but you I want to build about, a little town in the farthest actually, frontier? I heard about a genre of games that I didn't know existed, but I read about it in Wine Enthusiast, which is basically <laughs> virtual winery games. Have you nice. heard of these? Oh, yeah. you, you have to you you set up the terroir and then you you plant your vines and you go through all this stuff all the struggles and tribulations of a winemaker sounds fascinating to me but this to me so, reminds me of like railroad simulator where you drive a train right <laughs> uh, railroad tycoon railroad tycoon uh, 
There's yeah. farming simulators. I'm yeah. not shocked that there's a wine simulator. There's all there's a game that just came out in which you build your own university and deal with all the the hijinks that come up with like hiring professors and so forth. So Mike, gaming is now so broad and so niche that no one's not a gamer. They're just someone who hasn't found right. their game. 